Hello and welcome to the Thursday, March 21st, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I dove a little bit into logs related to the recent Fortinet 40 OS vulnerability, CVE 2024-21762. This vulnerability I talked a little bit about yesterday. We just sort of had an exploit released for it. So I was wondering if you see any scans for it. This vulnerability is a little bit more tricky than most of vulnerabilities that we usually sort of talk about. It's actually a good old fashioned buffer overflow, not one of these code injection or directory traversal vulnerabilities. So it does actually require a little bit of preparation of the system before the memory is kind of set up correctly for the exploit to work. The exploit itself uh, could be launched just against the index URL. So just looking for URLs, which is what we usually do in our honeypots is not really all that telling. But uh, the exploit that's out right now, and uh, that's uh, what an attacker is most likely going to use, uses a specific URL, a remote slash host check underscore validate to do that memory preparation. And this particular URL is being used because it can be used to send a significant data to the system, which then helps in setting up the memory correctly. Interestingly, we do see very little activity for this particular uh, URL. We saw some uh, in January and in February, but, uh, well, they actually all came from two different IP addresses that are related to each other. Not only are they in the same slash 24, they are also uh, using the exact same set of uh, exploits. In addition to this Fortinet one, they're using the same user agents and everything. So highly likely that this is the same actor just using this particular URL. This is also a decent URL if you're trying to fingerprint uh, these devices. So that may be something that's also being used to, for example, uh, discriminate against honeypots. Honeypots often do implement things like the index login page and such quite nicely, but uh, don't always emulate very well uh, these sort of secondary URLs, particular uh, this URL that uh, sort of uh, deals with uh, very specific sort of encrypted uh, data. So at this point, what's most likely going to happen is that attackers will use a URL like this. And there are a couple others that they could use to fingerprint the vulnerable system first and then only launch uh, the attack. So still the expert is out there. It works. It works reliable from what I've uh, seen. I'm not running it myself, but from what others have reported. And in so far, you definitely should expect compromise if you see a vulnerable a firewall in your network. And Microsoft has a good reminder that, well, at least here in the US, it's tax season. The tax deadline is April 15th. So usually the month leading up to April 15th, we do see a ton of uh, different scams uh, trying to trick uh, taxpayers into revealing their information. Probably a good idea to send out a little awareness uh, newsletter. And just do me a favor, don't just throw some stupid AI sentence in there. That's not really the problem here. Most of these scams are stupid, whether artificial stupid or human stupid. They go for a basic creed. So that's really what you have to bring home, that uh, if it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. And then a real a good a blog post by Akamai uh, that I liked a lot, and uh, it focuses on the Windows DHCP administrators group. This is uh, one of those elevated parishes group that's often a little bit overlooked, maybe not uh, taken quite that uh, serious, uh, but it does have quite a bit of power. If an attacker is able to control your DHCP server, they are able to control a number of critical features in your network. 
They point out a couple items here, like for example, proxy auto discovery, where an ad hacker uh, could essentially configure proxies. DNS is probably the most straightforward option here, where an attacker could trick you to use a malicious uh, DNS server. Lots and lots of other uh, interesting issues here, like they have a Kerberos relay scenario here. Well, I think in the extreme end, it's then a Pixie and a remote boot and things like this, where you really can completely compromise a network with nothing but access to the DHCP server. This blog post is pretty much targeting Windows, but of course the same is also true for your Linux uh, DHCP servers. Definitely something uh, to lock down and uh, put some monitoring around it. Well, anyway, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.